Hi, this is a video for Turbo Electric and I'm going to be talking about this car. This is a new car which is being designed and prototyped and is going to be built in Africa. The controversial part of this is the lead acid battery that the uh, car is based on. Um, there's, I did a video earlier uh, about this car explaining about you know the lead acid technology and stuff like that and the reason why um, it is the way forward um, and I got a lot of nasty remarks quite vitriolic remarks and a lot of debate uh, about it <clears throat> basically people didn't understand that uh, lithium lithium never will be the way forward because um, the problem with lithium is it's too expensive and it, it, it's going to be too expensive for you know, the foreseeable future. So there's no point in, in actually pursuing this. You've got all these manufacturers, they're all pursuing these lithium cars, but they're all very expensive. right? This one's cheap. This is lead acid, and it always has been cheap since, you know, like, I mean, these, this is 150-year-old technology now. It's, it's cheap, it's 100% recyclable, and it is the best battery to base any car on. They've been using it for, uh, like I say, 150 years successfully. So what's the problem? Right? And this is a newer iteration. This is AGM, which is a newer iteration, a modern lead acid battery, an advanced lead acid battery. And so, of course, this car is going to be successful, right, where others have failed because of the fact that it's based on lead acid. And lithium is just a waste of time. People are living in cloud cuckoo, cloud cuckoo land if they think that lithium is going to actually work out. Because it isn't. It just isn't. Right, are you still listening? <laughs> because that, that I've just said up to now, which is about two minutes, that's about the attention span of the average mental YouTube um, watcher. <laughs> they won't watch beyond that because they'll see all that and they'll go oh and then they'll start commenting <clears throat> and they actually don't watch the rest of the video which actually explains the real truth and that is that yes lithium of course is the way it is uh, an abundant chemical it is something which can be pursued and manufacturers are right to actually pursue that and put it in cars even though it's expensive now because lithium is an abundant chemical it is cheap and it will eventually, in like about five years' time, will completely replace uh, lead acid because it is a more appropriate um, chemical to use in a battery. It's a better battery as well. And even that will probably end up being replaced by something else. I don't know, fuel cells, whatever. But the point is, is that, yes, I do believe that lithium eventually will replace it. And that's the reason why I designed this car with a separating chassis, you see, so that when new technology comes out, that chassis will be replaced. Right now, as we speak, right, the only cars which are sold at the similar price to this, which is £30,000 retail, right, have shorter range, like 150 miles. This is 400. And um, they are um, and they are what's called a loss leader. Right? If you don't understand what a loss leader is, this is where a manufacturer uses finance from another part of the business or from borrowing, <laughs> And they actually do not, they set the price of the car based on what people will pay rather than how much they can, rather than trying to profit on it. And the idea is, is that in the future, that means that that market price, the, the manufacturing cost of that, uh, doesn't matter what it is, in this case it's an electric car. For instance, the Tesla Model 3. Tesla Model 3 you can buy for, it's just under £30,000 I believe, right? It costs Tesla somewhere between 35 and 40 grand to actually produce that car. So that's a loss. Why do they do it? Because eventually the price will come down to the point where they'll be profiting. But it's not today. <laughs> it's going to be in five or ten years' time. So they're doing what's called a loss leader. And that is to try and capture the market. This is not a loss leader. This is actually a profitable um, business because of the fact that it's using a cheap battery. That battery in this car will, when it's unmass produced, will cost me around about the six, seven thousand pound mark per car. Okay, the equivalent in lead in, in lithium is around about forty thousand right now. It's more than the price of the car. <laughs> it's a uh, hundred and twenty kilowatt hours. That's the biggest battery in any car that you can buy mass produced today. The biggest one. Um, 
currently that you can buy is a Model X or a Model S or um, in, in fact any other thing Tedless now which is a hundred amp hour a uh, hundred kilowatt hour sorry and that's the biggest battery that you can buy and that gives you around about 300 350 miles range quoted okay this is 20% bigger and gives you 400 mile range right so I just want to address the point that people are making which is a valid point which is that the, the, reason, the part of the reason why lithium technology is better is because of internal resistance. Internal resistance of a lead acid battery, although these are ADM, these have a lower internal resistance than a standard battery, right? But the, what that means is, is if you're drawing a lot of power from the battery, the actual battery itself will heat up and lose energy because inside it's resisting, it, it has a high internal resistance, right? And that causes a power loss, right? But this battery is so big that the current that's drawn is actually even even at the max power the current that's drawn from this is only a tenth of the rated capacity of the battery C over 10 right so we're not taking it to its absolute limit which is the thing that that causes the problem this you know like under normal operation this will be C C over 20 or something like that right which is the rated which gives you the rated capacity which in this case is 1.2 kilowatt hours per battery, and it's got 100 batteries in it. That's 120 kilowatt hour, right? So that's the reason the design, the design, the, the battery is so big that the amount of energy that's taken from the battery at any given time is such that the lead acid battery will perform as it should do, rather than being under stress. You see, and so it will, it will draw, it will get the 400 mile range out of it because it's not drawing high powers from the battery in order to do it. It's, it's relatively low. Three parallel batteries. Each battery is 450 volts. You know, you can work it out for yourself. You're using, say, 20 kilowatts uh, of power to keep your car going at, you know, whatever, sort of 50, 60 miles an hour. You can work it out. It's not much, you know, it's, it's you know, 10 amps um, per battery. Something like that, which is less, which is, you know, that's that's the sort of range we're talking about. So unless you're taking this on a drag strip, <laughs> in which case you don't care about the range, of course, <laughs> you know, you're not taxing this car. And in fact, round town, you're talking about something that basically is going to take something like maybe two amps per battery, <laughs> you know, from a 100 amp hour battery. So it, it, it's, it makes perfect sense to do it this way. But also, you will notice how it is a separating chassis. The reason why is because this can be replaced. Why is it a complete chassis and not just the battery? Okay. Now, do you remember back in the, I think it was the um, 90s, the early 90s, uh, around about the 90s, when people brought out computers and they were making those computers so that they could be upgraded. And so you'd have a socket based CPU, you'd have socket based RAM, you know, if, if people, obviously the people watching this quite possibly weren't around at that time and uh, didn't know about this but basically that's what happened and manufacturers saying yes buy my computer because it's upgradable right but that was bullshit because then what they did is then change the socket design they changed the memory chips and stuff like that so that even though you know like in theory it was upgradable the manufacturers discovered that they basically didn't want people to just buy the modules they want them to buy a whole computer again and so they actually change the manufacturer of the computer uh, of the chip and and stuff so you actually had to buy basically a whole computer if you wanted to upgrade it and so it's bullshit right and and it's for the sake that that was contrived but it's a similar thing here where if you're using a different battery technology it's not just a case of swapping out the lead acid batteries and putting lithiums in no you have to change a load of things right the most obvious is the charging system, which is different for a lithium battery. So you need a different system for that. The battery management system will be different as well because um, lead acid has a different performance than lithium. So you need to change uh, the battery management system. Might be just a firmware upgrade, but hey. But other things which aren't as obvious, like for instance, this is obviously a heavy chassis, right? And so the suspension is designed to carry that chassis. If we were to replace those batteries one for one with lithium batteries, right, it would sit far too high up off the road. So you'd have to replace all the suspension struts. The trouble is, this car is designed to take that weight. It has double suspension struts. If you were to put lithium in there, you wouldn't need double suspension struts. You could do away single ones, you see. So there's a whole load of things that actually need to be changed if you change the battery. Possibly use a less powerful motor because 
it's a lighter chassis, so therefore it doesn't need as much power to push it up hills and, and, and to recuperate the, uh, the power on, on, on uh, down runs. You see, so you possibly don't need the same motor, although that's a different thing, obviously. But that's the reason why it's a chassis, because the technology around it is all part of that, you see. And so you just basically take it into a garage, you roll this chassis out, you lift the car up like this, roll the chassis out, roll your upgraded chassis in, pay the price for the service and the, and the upgraded chassis, and then drop the car onto it. And then you've got, you know, and then you've got your... Uh, you know, your ripped seats and you can't, your kids puke on the floor. It's all in there, you know what I mean? Your furry dice. It's, that bit of it, you, you keep and the, the the rest of the car gets upgraded. And obviously it's recycling as well because it means you're not, you're not actually... And, and the chassis itself, basically, once um, that's replaced, then, you know, that will then be serviced and become somebody else's. And so you're not, you're not wasting it. It's not like you're throwing it away or anything like that. And uh, so that is, that is the real situation. Right now, this is a cheap car. Right, if I was to produce this next year, right, I could put a price tag of about thirty thousand pounds on this car retail, right? Mass produce this car with thirty thousand pounds, and I will make a profit on every single car. But Tesla won't. You see, so they're plowing they that you know, the US government is basically bought Tesla and they're paying for it all, aren't they? You know, I'm not a government, so I have to do it this way. Right? But the thing is is it's a good proposition. That's a four hundred mile range car, right? Um, its top speed is going to be, I don't know, about 160, 170 miles an hour, not to 60 in 6 seconds. Not a rubbish car, and look at the size of it. Do you know what I mean? You can do not to 60 in 6 seconds with your family in the back on their iPads. <laughs> you know? So, sliding around a bit, maybe. <laughs> but um, it's not a crap car. Do you know what I mean? 700 horsepower engine? <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so that's the thing about the batteries, okay? Now I'm going to post this video and I guarantee you that the comment section will be full of oh you're a fool and all that sort of thing. It will happen, you will see, right? Now this is about a 13 minute video, probably be chopped down to about 12, 10 minutes or something like that. And I guarantee you that most of the people who are in this video will not watch the section where I'm actually admitting that I was lying <laughs> and doing it on purpose just to attract attention to the YouTube crowd. And when I'm talking about the YouTube crowd, I'm talking about the one that are a bit crazy. <laughs> okay.